Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1971 Italian giallo film, The Double, also known as Love Inferno, which The Double makes more sense. Love Inferno, okay. I mean, I guess Love Inferno makes sense, but The Double just sounds better. But I'll talk about a little bit later what I think maybe The Double means. Um, not anything super intelligent, but directed by Romalo Guerreri. Guerrieri. Uh, this is my first film that I've seen of his. Uh, other films he's directed, The Sweet Body of Deborah, City Under Siege, and The Final Executioner, just to name a few. Uh, script was written by a few people, Sandro Continenza, who wrote some other scripts such as Appointment for Murder, Uncle Was a Vampire, Where Are You Going All Naked? <laughs> I love that title. The Iguana with the Tongue of Fire, which I wasn't huge on. I have a review for that on my channel. Seven Murders for Scotland Yard, The Legend of Blood Castle, and School of Death. So some good titles there. Um, not I haven't seen the films, but the titles sound cool. Also involved with the script was Saro Scavellini. More familiar with this individual. He wrote scripts for Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, All the Colors of the Dark, Anna, The Pleasure of the Torment, American Rickshaw, and the case of the scorpion's tail. Some good ones in there. And that's just a, a sampling of what he's written. Uh, this is based on, based on a novel by Libero Bigiaretti. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's called The Double. Uh, Jean Sorel as Giovanni in this film. I was very glad to see Jean Sorel. He's been in such films as A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, Short Night of Glass Dolls, which I love and think is very underappreciated, and A Quiet Place to Kill. I have reviews for all three of those on my channel as well. And if you're a big Giallo fan and this is the first video of mine you're seeing, I have over 50 Giallo reviews at, uh, on my channel at this point. I have a whole playlist for it, so you can check them out there. And I'm going to keep going. Interesting idea to have the camera mounted on the front of a car for the opening credits. It's kind of a cool idea, but it's also kind of dumb because you're not seeing much. There have been other Giallo films that I've watched where the intro, they're kind of, you know, in a car, you can tell, and kind of just going through the streets of Italy or wherever they're filming, and it's nice. Like, you get a good view of, you know, the 1970s Italy, which is always really cool. There's always really cool architecture as well. And it's just kind of fun to see that aspect of things. So when they mount the camera on the front of the car and you're basically just seeing the hood of the car and the windshield and not much else, uh, it kind of gets really boring. I do think it's different. And for that reason, it's kind of interesting. And the fact that, you know, they're popping up the names and they can pop it up on the hood of the car, which is a solid color. I mean, that's kind of cool. But overall, it's not that visually appealing because as it continues to go, you're just like, okay, I'm very much over this right now. Just saying. So with Giovanni being shot immediately, I suppose this is now his life flashing before his eyes. That's what it kind of seems like they set up with this. Um, they get to the end of the film first, obviously, with uh, Giovanni being shot to death by, um, oh, I forget what his name, the professor. I'll, I have his name later on, so I'll bring it up then. But it creates this mystery of, like, why is he being shot? Why is he dying right now? And you know that it's going to focus on John Sorrell because John Sorrell is the the big name in this film for the most part, as far as Giallo goes. And, um, yeah, you're just like, what led us to this point? So it's not a new thing. This has been done before where they basically start with the final event and then they kind of rewind and be like, how did we get to this point? And it's good. Like, films work that way. This film, I would argue... Not so great. Um, the way they do, like, the flashbacks and everything kind of suck. They're kind of frantic. They're really confusing. It's kind of hard to figure out, like, what's going on when necessarily because there are just these crazy jumps that have not really a whole lot of context. Um, and it's, it's just a hard film to watch for that reason. Also, it's just kind of boring, to be honest. It's pretty boring. You know, you get a cool thing here or there. But they're pretty few and far between, unfortunately. I don't really like this Giallo film. This is definitely at the bottom of my Giallo list, unfortunately. Uh, actually, I put it dead last, basically. Like, And it, I put it under Slaughter Hotel, you guys. And you know how much I hated Slaughter Hotel. Slaughter Hotel is a terrible film, but there's entertainment value there. This one doesn't have a lot of entertainment value, but... Given what day it is, I could have put this film above Slaughter Hotel. I'm just saying it's not great. 
The swimming scene is excessive. That's another thing. They have, like, these excessive scenes that are just kind of crappy. Like, the swimming scene early on when uh, Giovanni and Lucia are swimming in the ocean, uh, it, it just goes on way too long, especially because the water's cloudy. Like, you can barely see anything. Like, you just kind of see, like, shapes, and you're like, okay, I guess it's a body. Oh, I think I see some nudity. It's like back in the 90s trying to watch scrambled porn on a TV. Like, you're just like, is it? Oh, I think I see a boob. I think, I no, that's a butt. I, I don't know. Is that an elbow? Just saying. <laughs> the cuts during the beach sex scene are gratuitous. Uh, first of all, it's not that great choreographed of a sex scene. But then again, what is in a giallo? There are really horrible sex scenes in general in giallo films. I don't know why that is. Very unsexy. Um, this one's no different. Uh, <laughs> and add into that, there are so many cuts. Like, there's no need to have so many cuts during a sex scene. They're in one spot. Like, it's not like they're doing all these different positions and moving around a lot. There's just, like, Giovanni on top of Lucia. Like, how many cuts do you need? You need barely any, if any. You don't even need one. You don't need it. Anyway, you can tell how I feel about this. After Giovanni is shot, and I found myself watching the, this tomfoolery and thinking, any time now, let's get somewhere. Yeah, this film feels like just a giant waste of time. There's not a whole lot going on. Although I do think there is like some underlying subtext with the film, which I'll talk about at the end. I just think it's executed poorly. The actual events don't really keep you all that engaged. I mean, certain things kind of pique your interest, but then when they could follow them up with some interesting events or really like hook your interest, they just don't do it. It just doesn't happen. This is just like this meandering, kind of boring mess of a film. Things turned on a dime between Lucia and Giovanni. Uh, I think that was a jump in time, though. This is what I'm talking about, about these cutscenes and so many of them being so confusing because they make these kind of like leaps in time. So like there was the time on the beach and then they, I assume, they're jumping ahead in time because all of a sudden... Giovanni and Lucia going go from being very much in love and very happy with each other to very much upset with each other. Like, a lot of the tension is growing. And throughout the film, like, that's what's going on, is this kind of, like, continual tension that's getting worse and worse and worse. And the relationship between Giovanni and Lucia is getting worse and worse and worse. And you just keep seeing that Giovanni's obsession with Lucia's mother, Nora, just keeps becoming more and more and more. It's really a situation where it's like, he wants the look of Lucia, like he thinks she's hot, and he wants to be with someone young like that looks-wise, but he's in a different place maturity-wise in the relationship, and he just wants her to be that way. So he ends up being controlling, he ends up being a jerk to her, uh, and that's why the relationship is so bad. But then when he meets Nora, he's just basically like, oh, she looks like Lucia, but she's older and more mature, like this is what I want. Plus she's also probably, you know, more experienced in bed. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of that going on in his mind for as much sex as there is in this film. Just saying. This Eddie dude is everywhere. This guy is like, where's Waldo in this film? He pops up so many random times. And I think there's a subtextual reason for Eddie, which I'll talk about at, at the end of my review. But what's with this character? Like, he he's very poorly executed, I will say. Like, he has no personality. Uh, the only personality you get out of him is based off of, like, his tent that's on the beach and the books that they see in his car, which I think kind of play into the subtext aspect of things and the fact that he's, like, this kind of hippie dude and he, you know, bangs Nora. But it's, <laughs> I mean, he's such a wafer-thin character and he's just so random. He just shows up at random times. He's not really that important to the film at all. Like, they really could have done without him, honestly. But he just keeps popping up and you're just like, oh yes, of course, Eddie. Of course, Eddie pops up again because that's just what you do. I like when Marie slides... <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking about this. This has got me laughing. I like when Marie slides up next to Giovanni for a light of her cigarette and he tosses his lighter at her. He doesn't even like look at her at first and he just like tosses his lighter. Uh, that got the point across that he wasn't really interested in having the swinger lifestyle because you got the idea that that's where she and her husband were going with this. Her husband was talking to Lucia, kind of looking for a free love situation here, but uh, Giovanni wasn't having it, uh, and at that stage he was very much um, 
uh, jealous about what was going on and just had no interest. But I thought it was just very funny that he just kind of like didn't respond to her and just like threw his lighter. Funny. Giovanni wastes no time tripping over himself because of Nora. He looks like a fool. Like as soon as he meets Nora, he literally is like acting like a fool. He's being so obvious about the fact that he's into her, to her and to Lucia. I can't believe that Lucia never said anything or picked up on the fact that he was infatuated with her mother um, because it's very blatant. And right in front of her too, like there was one scene in uh, the car and you could just tell with the way he was acting towards her and Lucia's right there, like involved in the conversation, sitting in the back seat, seeing all of this going on. Like it's not just a behind the behind closed doors type thing. It's It's crazy. Giovanni doesn't get consent. He gets real aggressive with Nora to fulfill his sexual appetite. That's how you know he's also a terrible person. The other thing to keep in mind is that sort of veracity when it comes to taking what you want sexually was way more acceptable back in 1971, and people didn't really think twice when it came to films like this. Thankfully, we have moved very much further past this as a society that's a good thing. We're making progress, people. We still have a long way to go, but we're making progress. Giovanni sure does fantasize about killing Eddie quite a bit. That's another thing. Like, Eddie just serves to, like, show up here and there and then also just, like, be the object of Giovanni's rage for the most part. And it kind of seems like it's for no reason. But the subtext, I think I know why. But once again, poorly executed. And I'll tell you later about the subtext. Sorry, I keep teasing it. I will get there, trust me. All the interactions between Giovanni and Lucia show how they're in two separate stages of their lives, but still trying to force themselves together. Giovanni chasing Nora is what kind of helps show this. That's what I was talking about with the whole thing of, you know, he's at a different stage and he wishes that mentally and maturity-wise that she was where her mother was, basically. The other thing is it does seem like there's a significant age difference between Giovanni and Lucia. I know Nora says at one point that Lucia is 19, but they don't say how old Giovanni is. But he looks like he's probably supposed to be in his 30s, maybe even his 40s at this point. So I don't know. I guess Giovanni really is head over heels for Nora since he's willing to clean up a dead body for her. I mean, that is commitment, everyone, because you can end up going to jail, obviously, or even worse, in this case, getting shot over it. Um, obviously, this is a big mess up on Giovanni's part because he believes that he, he like, even pictures it. Like, you see, like, him fantasizing about, like, this is what happened. You know, dr daydreaming that Nora shot um, Eddie in her place because she didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. So, uh, I think part of that was kind of a wishful thinking thing because he's just like, aha, she has no interest in him. Because Nora was with Eddie at one point. Like, they were together sexually and relationship-wise. So, obviously, there was jealousy there for Giovanni because he wanted Nora. So, then he sees, ah, dead body in my, uh, who I want to be, my lady's place. I better get rid of this body for her. So, he goes through all this trouble, including burning the body at his family factory uh, making a lot of noise, by the way. The I think when he gets there, like, they show the security guard just, like, sleeping on the job. But he uses, like, this big tractor to pull the door open to this giant fire. It's like a giant kiln or something. And, um, and the security guard doesn't hear that. Like, that guy either was actually dead, had a heart attack or something, or just needs to be fired because he's the worst. Um... By the way, using that giant fire to dispose of the body, smart, smart. That's a great way to get rid of a body like that, and, you know, most people won't suspect it, or really even look in there. And he did it at night, so people wouldn't really be working when the worst part of the smell would be coming out of the fire. So, smart move, Giovanni. But not really, because it got you killed in the end. And not really, because even if it was a situation where Nora had killed Eddie you're still potentially going to get sent to jail. So, Professor Bergamo, that's right, that was his name. Professor Bergamo killed Eddie because they were an item. Uh, so I guess Eddie went both ways. Then he kills Giovanni because he wants to have his body and he knows Giovanni took it. So we find out in the end that Giovanni is shot by Professor Bergamo because 
Uh, he's upset that he wants the body. Like, he's the one who killed Eddie. He was going to come back for the body and wanted to keep it. He knows that Giovanni took the body and did something with it. So he kills him because he's upset because only he can have Eddie. It's loo It's such a loose story. You know, like, it's not a good ending. It's not a good motive. It's just, it's not good. It's just not good. All the cuts in the film seem random, and it really messes up the flow of it. So for that reason, it really drags even worse than just a lot of things not really happening uh, makes it drag. Uh, it does feel at times with all the flashes, uh, all the cuts, and the fact that they're like kind of going who knows where in time. Because they're like going backwards and they're going forward. Like It kind of starts to feel like Inception before Inception if you know what I mean, and it's just like, how deep are we going on this? Are we forward? Are we back? Are we, like, where are we right now? The other thing that didn't really help is the version of this I watched was on the Giallo Realm uh, YouTube channel, which has a ton of Giallo. If you don't know about it, you should check it out. But um, you could tell that the, the film was cobbled together by a few versions, like at least three different versions of the film. It was like bits and pieces were taken and put together to like make the full film again. Which that happens with these older films if they weren't preserved all that well. And with this film, you can see why it wasn't preserved that well, because it's not that great. The score gets annoying in this film as well. It's just like this really kind of like chintzy, crappy music that just like gets on your nerves. And it has a lot of kind of like the same noises that, that, that beats into your brain continually. And you're just like, stop. Hated it. Okay. So I am at the point where I'm basically done, so I'm going to give you my idea on the subtext that's at play here. And it sounds cool. It sounds smart. So a few things. Either A, I'm totally wrong about it, and I'm just over-intellectualizing this film. Or B, this is what's, what's try, what they were trying to get through, and they just did a really poor job of doing it. So could very well this could very well speak to the perceived perversion of Italian culture and ideals due to the encroachment of American culture. Giovanni is the concerned traditional Italian, and Eddie, the American hippie, is moving into his life as things change for the worse. So I kind of took that whole situation as more of like a macro view and have it, you know, be the subtextual thing of these Americans and their crazy, you know, uh, out there culture and alternative ways of life are creeping into the Italian culture and ruining it, just like the relationship that Giovanni is having is being ruined. Because if you notice, Giovanni's all about being faithful and being with Lucia initially, and then Nora shows up, but that's after Eddie has shown up into their relationship, and all these ideas start coming up to Lucia as well, uh, because she spouts a bunch of them off, like different political ideas that are more kind of Western, uh, as well as... Um, more kind of sexually sexually liberated ideas as well because it even seems like she's interested in the whole swinger lifestyle when Marie and her husband are kind of throwing that out there. Just saying. So I would love to hear what people have to say about this film. Put it in the comments. Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Did I miss something? And this is actually a great film. Probably, I'm thinking probably not. It's not that great. But out of five stars with half stars in play, it's a one star. I mean, it's a one star. I, I think that's what I gave Slaughter Hotel, and that's fitting. I'll put them on, on about the same level. Like I said, like any given day, I could take one over the other, but not good. So one star on this one. But, um, yeah, there are bound to be more of these, unfortunately, because I'm going through all the Giallo films on Giallo Realms uh, channel on YouTube, and uh, there's bound to be more of this. But there's bound to be some real gems, like uh, Eye in the Labyrinth was a real gem. Also, Corpse Mania was a real gem. I think that's the Giallo review I did before this one. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, like I said, put some comments down there. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that, because it is literally your way to repay me if you like any video I've ever done. I'm not taking your money. I'm not taking anything. I just want that subscribe to grow this nerdy horror community, especially this nerdy Giallo community because I think it's amazing that I've actually found this small community of people who are really into Giallo and enjoying my reviews because obviously you can tell I'm super passionate about Giallo. I mean, if I'm watching films like Slaughter Hotel and The Double, come on, 
Oh, which, by the way, I almost forgot to say, my idea behind the, the title of the double goes back to this one shot towards the end of the film where Lucia is there and her mu and Nora comes out, like her head comes out from behind Lucia's uh, head. So I think the double is basically basically like, you know, Nora is Lucia's double and Giovanni's choosing to go for the double. Just saying. It's dumb. It's lame. So is the film. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, hit that subscribe for me, please. Uh, but regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this uh, video. And until next time, keep it brutal.